So we're, you know, we've been back to face-to-face -face teaching for a while now. This year I've got more students than I've ever had before. And I love having the students back and talking about anatomy, but oh, I have, I don't think I've ever <laughs> talked as much as I have done recently. So right, let's hope my brain's got enough energy left. And we are gonna talk about the tendons in the hand. Um, we're gonna focus on this because there's a lot of anatomy here. So we're gonna focus on this particular region, region because these tendons get cut when people injure their extremities, their hands. Tendons um, allow muscles to insert into bone and tendons mean that you can put muscles at a distance from the thing you want to move, which means that while there's not a lot of space in the hand, there's quite a bit of space here. So you can put a lot of power here for grip. So tendons will transfer the forces of muscles in the forearm to the fingers, for example. This means that tendons are some of the toughest structures in the body. They can transfer high loads and then they can also develop slowly just like muscles can and get stronger over time. Um, which means, you know, they, they can heal reasonably well. The muscles then that are in the forearm that act on the fingers, the digits, would be called extrinsic muscles. Here they are. So this is the, the palmar side, also called the flexor side um, because this is finger flexion, this is extension. So the muscles on this side are flexing the fingers. So if we look in the hand, we see these tendons, tendons running up each digit. But there's not just one tendon here, there are two, and they, they lie over one another. Um, we have two layers of muscle. So these, these muscles are flexing the digits, so they get called flexor digitorum. One is more superficial, one is deeper, so they get called flexor digitorum superficialis and flexor digitorum profundus. So the more superficial layer of tendons run to the digits, but they only run this far to the, the middle phalanges. And they split to allow the tendon that's running deep to it to continue through and run to the tip of the finger, the distal phalanges where this tendon splits to allow the deeper tendon to run through, this gets called the tendinous chiasm. Now we can see here that these tendons have run from the forearm deep to this connective tissue, the flexor retinaculum, which ties down these tendons into the carpal tunnel. And they all move smoothly in there because these tendons are surrounded by synovial sheaths. So like the synovial joint, there is a synovial membrane, the synovial fluid. It lets these things move nice and smoothly. And there's a complex here then at the wrist. And then these tendons here also have synovial sheaths, which allows the two layers of tendons to slide over one another as you flex and extend your fingers. These digital synovial sheaths, the digits, the fingers, the digital synovial sheaths of the fingers may or may not be continuous with the, the common flexor sheath down here, um, which means the pathology can, might or might not spread. Um, what we can see here, we can see these tendons in the palm of the hand, but the palm of the hand actually is, is protected to a thick, tendon-like connective tissue covers over all this and protects it. So the tendons of the digits are most vulnerable, but the tendons of the digits are transferring force to the fingertips. So flexor digitorum profundus pulls on the fingertip. Flexor digitorum superficialis only pulls on the middle phalanges, but together they give you the power of grip. Now we also have the thumb. The thumb has one tendon running to the tip. Uh, if you saw the video recently where Kim managed to get a crochet hook stuck in the tip of her thumb, this was the tendon that was likely responsible for keeping that crochet hook in the thumb. This is, okay, the thumb's difficult, but we only have to think of really one tendon on this side. The thumb, this is flexion of the thumb, flexion of the fingers, flexion of the thumb. So this muscle here is flexing the thumb. When I'm climbing, I like Having this nice pinch means I can recruit this muscle, this tendon, which is flexor pollicis longus. The pollex is the thumb. So flexor pollicis longus, that tendon runs from the forearm up to the tip of the thumb here and gives 
power of thumb flexion. So an injury to the thumb here, you need to worry about that tendon there. Um, an injury to the insertion site of flexor digitorum profundus, one of the tendons and one of the fingers, means that you won't be able to do that. I think, it, I think it gets called Jersey finger. Maybe that's a Welsh thing because it's, it's a bit of a rugby injury. You kind of grab somebody as they go past to tackle them. You just grab the Jersey or the Jersey catches your finger and the force avulses the flexor digitorum profundus tendon from the bone. And you can still flex the fingers because flexor digitorum superficialis will pull on this bone, but it won't flex the fingertip because flexor digitorum profundus tendon is no longer attached. Dorsal side. If you know the back of your hand like the back of your hand, you may well have already seen these tendons. And you may be aware that it's difficult to move some of your fingers independently. You move the middle fingers and the other fingers want to go with it. You move the little finger, the other fingers want to go with it. And yet you do have some extra independent movements. And that's because of the tendons in the back of the hand. So these are the extensor tendons then. This is extensor, extension of the fingers. So the muscle responsible is extensor digitorum. There's only one layer. But there are some extra muscles. Um, so the index finger has its own muscle, extensor indices. The little finger has its own muscle, extensor digiti minimi but they are tied together by these intertendinous connections here. And if these intertendinous connections are intact, and look how they run obliquely, not in a straight line, then if those are intact, then the fingers kind of want to move together because as you move one finger, the, the other tendons get pulled by this intertendinous connection and they all get pulled together. But extensor indices exerts an extra level of control over that, as does extensor digiti minimi, to a certain extent. But those are the tendons on the back of the hand here. There's the extensor retinaculum tying these tendons down, and deep to the extensor retinaculum, these tendons also have synovial sheaths, so they can move nicely and freely. Um, and when we get to the digits, the tendons expand out and attached to the bones, but they kind of form this dorsal extensor hood. So there are a lot of attachments here. It's not like it's just pulling on the fingertip. And that dorsal extensor hood gets taken advantage of by some of the small muscles on the palm of the hand. They insert into it, uh, like the lumbricals, which let you flex the metacarpophalangeal joints, but also extend the digits. But that's kind of a story for another day but be aware that it exists, but that's what that dorsal extensor hood looks like. Now the thumb, <sighs> the thumb is a thing. When trying to work out what's going on in the thumb, we have to think about the movements of the thumb. If you look at the back of your thumb, you can see a whole bunch of tendons here. It looks like there's two, there's actually three. Now I said that that was, that's flexion of the thumb. So that's extension of the thumb, flexion, extension. Uh, that's abduction and that's adduction, abduction, adduction. So that means that when I abduct my thumb, this tendon here is obviously working. I can feel it if not see it. So that is the tendon of abductor pollicis longus. And when I extend my thumb, both of those tendons are proud. And there's actually, that's what I mean by there being three tendons there. So these two tendons are attached to muscles that are extending my thumb. One is short, one is long. The thumb is the pollex. So we have um, extensor pollicis longus and extensor pollicis brevis tendons. And those tendons forming this triangle here are forming the anatomical snuff box. And in there we find uh, bits of the superficial branch of the radial nerve, radial artery, scaphoid bone, things like that. It's an anatomical landmark. Ooh. Look, here they are here. See where they're running to? To there and then to there. So there we go. Uh, there, are, there are actually two tendons here 
and one tendon here. Tricky. So those are the flexor tendons on the palmar side of the hand that are at risk of injury and the extensor tendons on the dorsal hand at risk of injury. Hopefully it's useful to see that visually so you can imagine what's underneath the skin. And please be very careful with knives when you're washing them up or cutting things. Don't put your other hand in the way. Honestly, it happens all the time. See you next week.